Hey there, I'm Victoria, a certified Christian life coach, author, motivational speaker, and university educator, and I am obsessed with helping you navigate through life's ups and downs so that you can live day by day in God's peace despite the many external demands on your time and energy. The Choose to Think Inspirational podcast is about the delicate dance between God transforming you from the inside out and your personal responsibility for change, maturity, and refinement as a Christ follower. On the show, I'll help you connect the dots between your faith and your life in practical, meaningful ways while giving God room to do what only He can do and so that you can shine your light for Christ and be better equipped to serve your family and help others around you. You can change every area of your life one thought at a time. Welcome back to the Choose to Think Inspirational Podcast Brain Changer. Let's dive in. Hey, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to the Choose to Think Inspirational Podcast. This is your host, Victoria Leiden, and I'm so excited you're here. I have such exciting news to share with you. You've heard me talk about playing pickleball like a ton, and I absolutely love pickleball for one thing. I love playing with Jim. I love playing with my partner, Sarah. It's just been so much fun over the last several years. And there was a moment when after the Choose to Think devotional, the 365-day devotional was published, and through these years, I've talked with so many other of my friends, and we've jointly talked about how difficult it can be at times to actually play pickleball with your spouse. Matter of fact, sometimes it just feels so very hard. We noticed so many trends that would happen, and there, believe me, there are a lot of jokes about playing pickleball with your spouse, but... We noticed like, for example, if I'm playing with someone else, I never tend to give them constructive feedback during a game. I am always just very positive and upbeat and encouraging. But when I play with Jim, it's different. And I might freely let my mouth run in a way that I never would when I was playing with someone else. I might tell, you know, give him like, why are you doing that? Or can you remember that you're supposed to stay with me? Or even just last night we were playing and he was talking about the third shot drop and he said, Victoria, I don't know whether you're going to drop or drive because I was, I was like receiving serve and then they would return the ball and then I would need to either drop or drive the ball back on that third shot. It's called the third shot drive or drop. And so last night he wasn't sure what I was doing, whether I was going to drop it or drive it. And so during a game, he's like, I don't know whether you want me to drop it or drive or whether you're going to drop it or drive it because he had gone up thinking I was going to drop the ball, which is a soft touch to the ball, and it lands, ideally, it lands just over the net into the non-volley zone area, or the kitchen, as it's called. So he's thinking that that's what's going to happen, and maybe, I guess, I maybe I decided to drive it instead. I don't really remember, but at any rate, he was eaten alive. Whatever I did was not a good shot, and it was easy for our opponents to attack it. So they slammed it right back at his feet or slightly behind him and he just couldn't get it. So he was irritated. And that's why he said, Hey, what are you, you know, what are you doing? Well, I don't know what you're doing. I said, you've just got to follow my lead. You've got to stay back when I'm receiving and executing that third shot. You have to wait and see what I do, whether I'm going to drop it or drive it. And then you respond accordingly. And so, you know, he really kind of wasn't liking that, but that's the way I play generally because in the same token, when he's receiving the third shot and has to execute that shot, I always wait to see what he does. If he just gently puts it into the kitchen, then I'm up at the line quickly because the idea here for both of us is to get to the kitchen line as quickly as we can because you have most control of the game when you're both up there together. So I know this is a long story here, but, and I don't mean to give you the whole dynamics of playing pickleball necessarily, but it kind of segues into this big announcement that I have that I want to share with you. And So anyway, there are just a gazillion issues that go on between husbands and wives on the pickleball court. Matter of fact, one of my friends said after we hit, there were about, I don't know, three couples, six of us there just sitting around laughing at ourselves and how we play. And sometimes I think that if for Jim and I, if if our opponents can just get us a little bit rattled, then they're going to be like, hey, let's get them arguing or something. And then that, that can work to their advantage. I wonder if they're thinking that sometimes, but we try and we've come so far. I have to tell you that we have come so far. And 
the majority of the problem, I'm also here to confess, has not been Jim because he loves to play and he plays for fun and he's got such a great attitude and he can make two errors in a row and it doesn't get him down. Whereas if I make two errors in a row, I mean like the sky is falling because I'm so hard on myself. And sometimes when you're hard on yourself, you're also hard on other people, especially those people you love. I mean, you can even look at your family dynamics and figure that out, right? We're just a lot harder on ourselves than those we love. Whereas with other people who are maybe just acquaintances or friends, we're so much nicer to them or can be. And if you've known me long enough, you know also the cry of my heart is to be completely authentic, whether I'm playing the president of the United States in pickleball, whether I'm playing my husband, whether I'm playing some guy down at Kirk Levington, I don't care. Just I want to be the same and I want to demonstrate Christ-like behavior and attitudes on the pickleball court. Not only on the pickleball court, I want to do that everywhere. I want to do that with my children. I want to do that when I'm teaching Spanish. I want to do that when I'm at Kroger. And over the years, you've also heard me confess a gazillion times, I can struggle with some aspects of being Christ-like. It's like, I want to do that. I want to be a certain way but I oftentimes fall short. And so it's a real dilemma for me. And I struggle with that. I really, really have existential angst and internal angst about making sure that what I speak about, what I profess, that I love the Lord, I serve him. And then my behavior is in line with that. And when it's not, I feel really bad and I feel really guilty. And I dialogue with the Lord saying, Lord, oh, please help me because I just seem to fall so short. Now, I also know that there comes a point where we don't want to do too much self-analysis because that is kind of like a dead-end street and too much self-focus is really not healthy. But I do think that when the Lord and the Holy Spirit convicts of sin, sinful attitudes or behaviors or missteps that we take, then he's also right there to help us and guide us and lead us into a more joyful, a happier spot or place to be. And that's a long story, kind of a roundabout way of saying that one of the reasons that I wrote the Pickleball devotional, it's called Pickleball Passion, a marriage devotional, 21 days. It's a 21 day devotional. And the purpose really is to deepen your connection with your spouse and essentially in your marriage and on the pickleball court, because I know that married people struggle on the court. It's a known fact. So many of our friends, we laugh. And what I was saying a moment ago is there was one time there were a group of us all together and that one guy said, and we've been laughing at how we all deal with each other on the pickleball court. Like one wife cannot stand it where when her husband rolls his eyes. Well, nobody likes that really, but it's especially bothersome to her because she doesn't seem doing it with other people, but he does it with her. I don't think he does that anymore, but that's just kind of an example. And so the thought was that why don't we just all the guys line up on one side, all the spouses, the wives on the other, and then the guys will move one step to their right. And the person in front of the guy, then that new woman would be their new partner and everybody would be happy that way. (laughs) So anyway, it is difficult, but the motivation for writing this pickleball devotional was my, out, out of my own need to have character refinement on the pickleball court. You've heard me confess sometimes, like my competitive nature, how I want to win and how I could be a poor sport. You've heard some of those stories that I've shared on the show. But this one is really true to my heart because, you know, if I can get it right with Jim, if I can get it right, quote, right, with my children then and my parents, then I know I can get it right in any other social scenario and situation. If I can glorify God with Jim, with my husband, if I can glorify God in my relationships with my children, my parents, my family, then I know that I can glorify God in any other human relationship that I ever have. Because the most difficult relationships that we have are with the ones we love the most. And I'm just, I'm committed to 
having my heart come under the knife, so to speak, or be circumcised. And I don't say that in a way that is like, oh, I'm just so painfully humble here. I'm not even trying to be humble. I'm just trying to tell you that I really do struggle sometimes with character refinement because I want the Holy Spirit to be so demonstrated in my life. And yet I seem to fall short a whole bunch but it's not for lack of desiring to do God's way and to be obedient and to listen to him and to put into place those things that are wholesome and right and healthy to, and, and why you would say, why do you do that? Well, because we are to be light bearers and torch bearers for God. And I, you know, what a delightful thought to think that someone might say, oh, Victoria has something in her life that's different and that it's what I want. And I wonder how she has this relationship with the Lord. What a, what a compliment that would be, right? Instead of being repulsive or a big turnoff, if there would be someone who said, wow, that's, that's a life well lived. That's what I'd like to have. And so I'm very, interested. I'm very motivated by the trappings of my own flesh and my desire to crucify that flesh and to also, if the Lord would ever have it that I could possibly win others to Christ, it would be such a joyful thing, I think. And so let me just tell you a little bit about this pickleball devotional. It's a practical journey of love, faith, and pickleball and it's supposed to be a transformative 21 day guide. It's designed for you guys, you couples out there, or maybe you know someone who plays pickleball. Everyone, you know, pickleball is the rave nowadays, right? It's the fastest growing sport in the world. And it seems like everywhere you turn, somebody's talking about pickleball. So for those of you or those you know who share a love for the fast paced court game, and are committed to strengthening your marriage, this is the pickleball devotional for you, the devotional for you. Sometimes I write from a very whimsical perspective, telling on both Jim and me, and then other times it's definitely deeper and more heart probing. Obviously, it's also going to be from a Christian perspective. You would expect no less. And each daily devotion serves up a winning combination of spiritual insight and practical relationship wisdom. As you navigate the pickleball court and the, quote, court of life, you can discover how the principles of communication, teamwork, and perseverance can enhance your game and your marriage. Whether you're a seasoned pickleball enthusiast or you're just starting out, the Pickleball Passion Devotional invites you to smash through the challenges of daily life and marriage with purpose and drive. Now, every day it's divided like this. There's a targeted scripture verse, and that's to serve as the theme focal point. Then there are antidotes or stories that I tell that kind of seamlessly weave Christian principles into the context of both pickleball and marriage. It was so fun to do that, to say, okay, when you lob the ball, what could that principle be like when it comes to marriage? Or when you are doing um, long lasting rallies or dinking, what, how could we compare that or pull in an analogy there that would go very nicely with marriage? There are also two to three reflection questions to promote honest and open discussions and create deeper connections and intimacy. You know, if you and your husband or you and your wife can do this devotional over, say, a three week period, I think you're going to find that, wow, things are starting to improve on the pickleball court. And maybe you don't need the improvement that I needed, but I think you're going to show some character refinement and development and maybe get to know your spouse in a very, you know, in a new way. And then every day also has a heartfelt prayer that underscores biblical truths and also just sets the tone for your day. It's going to equip you to reinforce your commitment to God and to your spouse. Now, the focus is on positive and uplifting messages designed to help you rediscover the joy in your relationship, fostering a, a renewed commitment toward God and one another. And like I said, the result is what? It's a stronger, more fulfilling marriage. It's a win-win, sure to deliver a daily dose of healthy encouragement and inspiration to your marriage on and off the court. Now, I want to tell you what some of the people have actually said, you know, I had uh, reviewers and I'm kind of putting out that content a little bit at a time, but DSM said, I like the devotional because it really is a balance between things that will help your marriage and help you play pickleball better with your spouse. It's a real win because it's personable, touching, humorous, and relevant all at once. And then my friends, Doug and Kat Martin, and they are co-owners of a business called Sight Out 
in a little dash, pickleball.com. I'd love it if you would you know, go to their website and patronize them. They, their son will also works with a paddle manufacturer or company, and they, they actually make other things as well. It's called Diadem and their son, Will Martin designed a paddle, a pickleball paddle that promotes mental health and well being, and like break the stigma kind of thing. And they're just such a great family. And so they have a company called Side Out Pickleball that I'd love for you to go look around their website and so forth. But this is what they said about it. Um, they said, wow, just wow. Victoria has really hit the ball in the sweet spot. And if you know a pickleball paddle, there's like a little sweet spot on your paddle where you could like spin it or it makes a really good shot. And, you know, as opposed to, I guess, I don't exactly know what the sweet spot is now that I'm saying it, but I think it's just that one spot that, that you can really either get more force or a greater spin if you just hit the ball right there. But anyway, that's, that's that. But they say that Victoria's really hit the ball in the sweet spot with the pickleball passion devotional as a pickleball playing married couple, this devotional really is an eye opener. It sheds light on so many issues that have arisen due to our continued mixed doubles play. He's talking about he and his wife. We only wish we had read this years ago as it would have alleviated many issues that we eventually had to stumble through all on our own. Again, that's Doug and Kat Martin of sideoutpickleball.com. And so that's kind of what they have to say about it. And I had a lot of fun writing it. My dear friend, Sarah helped with so much of the editing and organization. But the best part of all of this is that it's ready. It's been released. You can get it on ebook or you can also get it in paperback form. If you order today, I think you might be able to get it by Christmas. So that would be even better. And But the real good thing is that there's a little freebie that goes with it. And that freebie contains 50 activities that you can do with your spouse. It is so awesome. So good. It's six pages that you can download and then kind of put a check by, yeah, we did that thing or, Hey, we're going to do this next week. Because again, it's designed to help you foster that amazing and privileged relationship that you have with your spouse. So I hope that you're going to get your copy of the pickleball passion devotional today or that you're going to gift that to someone else, or that you're going to go to amazon.com. That's where you can find it. And I will put the link to both the ebook and the copy of the book, the, the paperback. I'm going to put those in the show note link. So just click on those and go right over to Amazon, stick it in your cart. And there you got it. It's so affordable. You're, and it's really going to bless you or bless someone else. And then I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about it. So after you buy it, if, if you would go back to Amazon, once you look inside it and maybe star it or, you know, you know, five stars for good measure and then write a one sentence review so that the pickleball devotional can pick up a little bit of traction. Believe me, there are not many pickleball devotionals out there. I don't see any that are for a married couple. So this could be the first time in world history that a pickleball devotional has ever been written for married people specifically and I, for Christian married people. People, I should even say. So I'm just so excited about this devotional and I hope that you'll go on there, write a little review for me, share the link and help me get the word out because I'm over here in my little corner of the world, just having fun writing, which is God, what God has gifted me to do and sharing some of the things that I learned about him and about being a 21st century Christian with you and all the podcasts, all that content. We are now closing down on year four. Four, if you can believe that. And then next year starts year five, four solid years, 270 some podcast episodes later. We're still going strong. We're heard in over 70 countries around the world. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do by writing and sharing my faith with others and encouraging you in your faith, helping you and reminding you to take those thoughts captive because by gum. That's exactly what I have to do on the pickleball court. I so have to watch my thinking. You have no idea how hard I have to work. And pickleball has just brought that out of me. And it's a new area of refinement for my character. And even though it can be painful at times, I know that I tell the Lord, I'm in, I'm in. We often say we have a little pickleball texting groups and we're trying to figure out who's going to go and play on, on a given day at a certain place or whatever. And people just text back and they're like, I'm in, 
I'm in. And that's what I say to the Lord when he says, Victoria, I want you to kind of work on this area of your heart and your mind. And I want you to take those thoughts captive. I want you to find that lasting transformation that you so desire, Victoria, so that you can walk with a renewed mind and that you can share joy and life and light with everyone that you meet on the street or within the confines of your home. And when he says things like that, or when I get that prompting or where I, when I know that that's the direction he's taking me, I have two words to say and back to him. And I say, Lord, well, this is going to be three words, but I say, Lord, I'm in. So I'm in, I'm in for change and transformation, not for my sake alone, though I do benefit, but I'm in for change and transformation and mind renewal and neuroplasticity, right? The brain change I'm in because I also want to be a, an example. I want to figure out and discover what it means to have the mind of Christ. So, yep, I'm in. So thank you for listening to this episode where I'm actually promoting my pickleball passion, 21 day devotional for married couples, a marriage devotional. Thank you for letting me kind of wag on about that. And I know that on Sunday of this week, it's it's Christmas Eve and Monday is Christmas. So I do want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas and that you may have Christ in your heart, not just on that day, but every single day of the year 365. Every day is Christmas. Don't forget that. I know many people are sad. They're lonely. They're struggling. They're stressed. You know, and the studies all show this, right? All these, all these different uh, statistics that are out there and, and people do questionnaires and they do surveys and, but the data overwhelmingly will say that people struggle at holidays. And, and if that's you, I want you to know that you're not alone. It, God is Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with you. God is with you 24, seven, 365. You are not alone. And somehow I pray that he would so whisper in your ear and tenderly speak to you and that you would sense his presence, that you would sense that warmth, that comfort, the strength that maybe that's what you need is strength. Maybe you're bone weary and you just need his strength. Maybe you need to rest, but whatever that is that you need, I pray that God will abundantly and over in an overflowing fashion, give you exactly what you need and that you would know that it came from the very heart and hand of God. So as we continue, as we kind of come up on the new year, let you and I resolve to choose to think. Let's really resolve to choose to think. Let's not let our thoughts lead us to dark and dreary places, but instead let our, our thoughts be focused on Philippians 4, 8, whatever God tells us to think about. Let's go that way with our thoughts. Let's spend our time and energy in that fashion. So please have a wonderful and safe holiday break and Christmas and the new year coming up. I love you so much. I thank you so much for all your support. You just have no idea what you really, really mean to me. The, the kind word you send, the email that you take time to text to me or to send me a Facebook message that you drop in my inbox. I see all of those and they mean so very much to me. So I couldn't thank you more and God bless you. And until next time, you keep living your best thought life. God bless you. Dios primero y que Dios te bendiga. Ciao. And that's a wrap, Brain Changer. And listen, if you like what you hear, would you leave us a one to two sentence review at Apple Podcasts, share the link with a friend, or tag me on your share on social media? It would mean the world to me and would help us to keep shining the light of Christ and sharing the good news to others who are in need of encouragement. Please visit us on our website at choose to think.co. That's with the number two, choose to think.co, to get on our monthly newsletter list. And if you need a guest speaker for your next women's retreat or church event, I'm your gal. Email me at choose to think at gmail.com. And that's with the number two, choose to think at gmail.com. Finally, I offer limited free mentoring sessions each month where you and I can chat to help you develop a strategy for your thoughts in any area of your life. I'm a certified life coach and I have something to share. 
visit choosetothink.co and click on mentoring for more details. Also, keep in mind that the messages on this show are for informational and educational purposes only. Please consult your medical doctor for all medical issues. Thank you again for tuning in. God bless you.